Assalamu alaikum and good day. Today we will learn a new topic which is Ray. Right, so before we start our lecture today, so the objective of this lesson is to introduce a real basic of names, data types, and index. Initialize an array at definition time. Initialize an array during program execution. Selecting elements from array. Working with two-dimensional array and capable to manipulate array operations. So basically, this is the objective of this lesson. And hopefully, you can understand regarding this topic. What is multi-dimensional array? So multi-dimensional array is array that have more than one columns for example that we have here is a one box that have multiple of rows and we have here another one that we have two dimensional that have one two three four five rows but we have additional of two columns here so the meaning of two dimension array that we have here we will have multiple of dimension array this is example of visualization of how the two d dimensional array looks like so we have here the first dimension array that we learned on the previous video is called one dimension if we have only one column then it will be called one dimensional array but in this lesson you will learn regarding the two dimension array which is you will have the second dimension that more than one columns for example here you have one two three and four columns at the same time you will have one two three four five rows remember that in the previous lesson that we learn regarding one dimensional array you will have declaration for rows how we can declare to this array basically declaration of 2d array is quite similar with one dimensional array that you will have a square bracket during the declarations in 2D arrays, you will have two subscripts, which the first is for the number of rows and the second is for the columns. The declaration of two-dimensional array takes the form of data type of array, okay, the name of the variables, the row size, and also the column size. And we will have here as R stand for the row and for example here stand for the C for the columns example that we have two example of the integer data type and also the character data type for array so this is the example of declaration to these arrays for the numbers that you will have row size of 5 and column size of 4 for the character subject list you will have you will have 10 list of subjects that each of the subjects will have maximum of 60 characters for example the first subject name is programming technique the second subject name is mathematics the third subject is history and so on but each of the subjects maximum character is 60 during declaration of 2d arrays is similar as a 1d arrays meaning that you need to set the size of your array for the row and also for the column as well right if you have a variable here let's say this is row stand for the row and this one is sent for the column meaning set you set the value initial value for the rows let's say rows 
equal to 10 and also the column equal to let's say 60 right so when you set the array variable list here with the another variable that stand for the rows and its column is initialized in the other variable this, this is quite similar if you have you set the size directly inside the, the square bracket and most importantly is the index is start from zero so when compiling encounter the declaration it's allocate the memory location for the elements in a linear fashion way and we will go through regarding how we can access each element in the array the dimension for variable length must be set before the declarations similar as we have here this is an example of visualization of 2d arrays of the location for each element similar if you have a 1d array that you will have the location of each element in the array let's say example here we have integer x variable number of row is 3 and number of column is 4 so you will have here column of 4 and number of column of rows and remember that the indexing for array must be start from zero so inside here you will see that the two subscripts that represent the row and also the columns the index zero and also index zero the second one represent the first row and also the first column that will be located here what about we want to access the second row right the second row and you want to access for the the third row so means that it will look like this this one the second row and the third row so this is the elements that you can use index 1 and also the index 2 remember that the indexing must start from 0 in the previous slide you learn regarding how we can declare a numbers for today sorry but how we can set the array for the string array of string is used for holding a series of string the first subscripts define the number of strings while the second subscript is for numbers of character for each string for example if we have here if you want to store a list of name character names and you need to set the size of string here how many number how many names that you want to store in this array declaration let's say 5 and what is the maximum character for each names let's say here 60 so we have here number of row meaning that number of list name and number of column for each names how we can describe 2d array for the string this is an example of declaration of name that you have two rows and nine columns so you will have here the elements of each names that represent a list here so name index 0 meaning that the first string for the name name index 1 the second string of the name name index 2 is the third string of the name and so on there are two ways to initialize 
to the array similar that we learned in the previous lesson of 1D array the first way is compile time initialization and the second one is runtime initialization so what is compile time initialization so compile time means that you initialize or you set the value or the constant value to the arrays in the coding but but runtime initialization you set the value for the array by using the loops meaning that the user will key in the value for the 2d array for 2d array compile time initialization so it's quite similar to we have 1d array but you will have additional columns for example here you have two columns and at the same time you have two rows so just like we have here take a look on the visualization so this is an example of how we can set a constant value for the integer to this array so make sure that the value that you set inside the array is must be integer value it's not the floating value all right so the first row represent here so 99 comma 3 so 99 here represent the first row and the first column so what about the value of 3 here is the first row but it's located in the second column similar that we have here for value 12 and also 30 is separated by using comma meaning set so once you have a comma here it's represent for the second row so you will have here 12 for the second row first column value of 3 the second row and the second column and continue for the 40 and 15 for the third row 36 and 70 for the fourth row and the last one 10 and 2 will be the fifth row and all of these numbers is must be open and close with the curly bracket and inside of curly brackets here represent the value for each row and also the column in the 2d array this is the detail of the previous slide that represent the integer 2d arrays so what we can see here the elements how we can access the elements so what is the element so 99 is the elements 3 is the elements that represent the value inside the array so how we can access the element in this array so we can access this element of 99 by using these two subscripts indexing 0 for the first column 0 the first column how we can access for the value of 3 here the first row and the second column index 0 index 1 how we can access for the element 70 so we can access by using the indexing of index 3 and for the row indexing 1 for the column so similar as we have here let's say x square bracket the first square bracket represent the row 3 and square bracket 1 index 1 represent for the column row and also column so since this variable of array that located here contains a value of 70 minutes and we can access this value by using this indexing this is another example of string in 2d array that we will have multiple of names 
in one declaration. Previous lesson, you learn about how you can design your program of multiple of name by using multiple of variable. Let's say you have name one, name two, name three, that represent three names. But in this lesson, you learn how you can create a 2D array that can store up to three names. For example, Ali, Mamad, and Siti Noor. And each of the names have maximum size of 10. The visualization of these three names can be represented in this figure. This one represents the maximum size of character is 10 and the maximum size of for the row is 3. So you can see here A is located in the first row and the first column. Index 0, index 0. Character L located in the first row but in the second column. Character I is in the same row as A and L, the first row, but is located in the third column. Similar for the second and also the third names for Mamad and also Siti Noor. So this is how we can set for the compile time initialization for the string in 2D array. This example represents 1D array for character name and this example represents only one name in the declaration of 1D array. So in this value represent Ali as the only value that store in this 1D array. So A located in the first column L in the second column and I in the third column. So how we can set multiple of name in this declaration and modify into the 2D array simply adding the second square bracket here let's say 60 so what is happening here you will have 10 names then each name represent maximum 60 character so index 0 1 2 until index 9 but since we modify this declaration the maximum character is 60 so we'll have here until index 59 So this example how we can initialize for 2D array by using runtime initialization. For the runtime initialization, so we utilize the for looping. For example here, so this declaration is present for the number. Size of row is 5. Size of column is 2 and i and j represent for the increment that will be used for the first loop and also for the second loop so i represent for the first loop j represent for the second loop so what is happening here so the first loop will access for the row and the second loop is for the accessing the column so while the second loop here is complete so meaning that you will have a complete of column in the current row so for example here i is 0 represent the first index 
in the row j equal to 0 is the first index for the column so the first loop here will looks like this the first index for row and the first index for the column so remember that this is it one of the example for the nested loop meaning that this loop will complete if the inner loop is already done or means that the condition of the i is less than 2 is met so it will do the inner looping still on the first row but it will do the increment for the second looping i is become plus 1 and right now your j is 1 so i here represent the row j here represent the column so the inner four will repeatedly do for the column first meaning said for the first row once for the first row is complete then it will do for the second row by increment the i here so for example here so this is example for the first row first column first row second column input and output for 2d arrays so initialize a value to an array so this is how we can initialize a value to the array the first thing you need to declare an array together with the size of row and size of column and then here you initialize this value into these elements the first row and the first column so how about reading from the keyboard so remember that you need to have the declaration for the 2d array but you will use the scan f to read the import from the keyboard m percent represent the location of the memory so this is the indexing for the element that will be added in the variable the last one here example how we can access or how we can display the value in the array elements so number square bracket first one for the row and square bracket uh, zero for the, say, the the column runtime initialization for the 2d array it can be done by using this example of code the first example represent for 1d array this may look like this so name 10 so 10 here represent the maximum character for one name and you can use scan f or you can use get s represent get string function for reading the key from the keyboard and print up to display or either put string for the display both of these function represent the same functionality so take a look on the second example here for 2d array so differently we have here for the first one and also the second one here you will have three here represent three names and each name maximum character is 20 so let's say here you want to say for the first name or you can say for the first row you only utilize this one square bracket 0 represent the first row even though you don't need to set what is the second elements here that represent for the columns so it's, it will be different compared to the integer or the float value because string represent 
multiple of character so we only said what is the elements or what is the row elements that we want to display for the names this example represent the sample of code for how we can design a program by using 2d array this program represent a multiple of edges that the number of row and also the number of column will be set by the user so by using this command prompt how many rows and how many columns for example you want to set here we can value of 3 and for the row and value for the 2 for variable column so what is happening here so h will have 2 d arrays of 3 rows and 2 columns this looping here represent reading from the user so by using the first four and also the second four here remember that the first four represent for the row and the second four represent for the column so i is the initialization for the first row j is the initialization for the column so this part represent the output of 2d array of edges by using 2 4 the first four for the column sorry the first four for the row the second four for the column 